We promised people we were going to run containers in Podman, not just show them how to list networks. Here's one of the cool things, and we already touched on this, about Podman versus Docker is that you can literally pull containers directly from Docker Hub. And you see I've got Podman run, dash D just means it runs detached in the background. The dash P is what port to map in. And I'm calling out docker.io slash HTTPD. In the Docker world, you might be used to just putting the container name, just HTTPD at the end, because Docker defaults to checking Docker Hub. Podman also defaults to checking Docker Hub, but it has a couple other repositories built in as well, which is one of the things that Podman does that Docker at least didn't at the time that Podman was made. You could have several repositories. So if I didn't include that docker.io, it'll ask me, where do you want to get this from? And it'll go to the Red Hat repo. There's a second one, and then there's Docker Hub. You just have to pick it from the list. But to avoid that, you just call out docker.io slash, and then the name of the container you want to pull. This is going out to Docker Hub. It's pulling in the HTTPD. This is the official Apache HTTPD container. Taking some time here. But don't forget that now is the time of the show where if you're live, please interact with us via chat or feel free to leave us a comment. We read them and respond to them pretty much all the time. All the time. We stay up at night to watch those comments to make sure that they get answered. Exactly. We have the Nate Lager five second response guarantee. <laughs> I better set up a bot, I guess. <laughs> So there we go. If we look at Podman PS, you can see it is running. Now, if I do a Docker PS, we get the same output, right? So it still shows me that that thing's running. If I do a curl, on port 8080, there it is. So just that simple, right? It, it That was a lot like Docker. Now, the other cool thing, remember I said that if I type Docker run, it would have done the exact same thing. And we're going to show you that too. So we could move on to the next lab unless there's other questions. Rick's talking about the auto response bot. Yeah, that sounds like a job for a container. That's right, Rick. All right, so let's try to stop this one so that it doesn't get all messy on us here. Since I didn't give it a name, it assigned one just like Docker would have. I don't know if it uses the same name algorithm. That'd be cool if they went to that level of compatibility. <laughs> All right. The other thing that's really common with Docker is you'll go to Docker Hub, find the container you want to use, and then there's a whole bunch of instructions on there about how to utilize the container. Command switches you might want to run, how you might build your own custom container from this particular container. I went over to Docker Hub for the same container we just did that example on, HTTPD, and there is a block in there about how to build a container from Apache's official HTTPD container. So I thought a fun experiment would be to simply take their documentation and copy and paste it into my Railbox running Podman and see if it all worked. But we're gonna do a little bit of setup here. First, we're gonna make a place to do our work. And then we're gonna make a Docker file. This is the instructions you would pass to Docker to build a container image, right? I'm not going to switch shares to show you that I got it right from Docker Hub. You can go look at uh, Docker Hub to see if it looks the same. I assure you that it is. Basically, what this is telling it is we're going to start it from HTTPD 2.4. Remember what I said before, the one change we should make, it just means that our build is going to ask us where to get HTTPD from. We should change this to docker.io slash HTTPD 2.4. Right now with Podman, another step toward making this a little bit less, I don't know what the word is. You can actually call that Docker file container file because that's really what it is, right? Docker file is a, is it comes from the Docker world. You don't have to use that. You can just call it container file, or you could like call it Bob and just pass in a flag that says, use this as my container file, but that would be really weird. So just call it container file or Docker file. Either one of them should work. Okay, so <laughs> you notice that in that Docker file, it's going to copy in the contents of public HTML 
into user local Apache 2 HT docs. That's where they put the web root for whatever site you're copying in. Why would you be making your own container if you weren't going to copy your own data in, right? So what we're going to do here is, in fact, I'm also going to copy and paste this because you guys watching me type, it, it's stressful. But Nate, how are we going to point and laugh when you make typos? I actually didn't put it in the docs. I have to type it. <laughs> Save that out. And then all we have to do is run the build command. Now, again, this build command came directly from the documentation on Docker Hub. So you're going to notice that it says docker build dash T. That's the tag we're assigning to it. We're going to call it my HTTPD. And then the dot just tells it to build in the current directory. That's where it's going to find the Docker file. And you see it there pulling in the container. You could pull these ahead of time if you wanted to save time. And it's probably what I should have done. But now I just want to clear any confusion. We're running Docker build, actually calling Docker. It's not actually calling Docker. Any commands that are different between Podman and Docker, it'll translate, right? But largely what it's doing is chopping off Docker and replacing it with Podman because the commands are the same. If I did Podman build T, my HTTPD, it would do the exact same thing. So yes, it's just basically passing it on to Podman. The idea is that if you're copying and pasting from Docker Hub or from instructions from three years ago when you were still running Docker, they'll still work. Podman image ls. There we go. Now you're going to see we've got a new localhost my httpd, right? So again, it ran Docker, but it did it in Podman. Okay, copied directly from the Docker Hub page is the Docker run command that will run the container. So we're just going to show that this actually works. Ah, so this is what I was talking about. What I need to do is cancel this. Oh, there's a two at the end of that. That's the screen that would have come up if I didn't tell it where to get it from. It should default to localhost first because this is a local image. No, I guess not. So we've got to do localhost. Did I mess up the, hold on. My dash HTTPD. Oh, it's because it's my Apache. Sorry, copy paste fail. Actually, writing the directions fail. I'll clear the screen so you guys can see what I'm doing. The error here was that it's not called my dash Apache. Scott, why didn't you catch that? Because it was too far down on the screen. <laughs> it's actually my HTTPD. There we go. It's just going to run it because it checks localhost first for images that are local, if it finds one, it just runs it. It doesn't ask you where to get it from. The menu you were seeing there was, if I wanted to get it from Docker Hub, I would have to select it from the list. So again, we ran it in Docker. Podman PS shows us that it's running. Docker PS still shows the exact same output. Am I getting that point across? Do I need to keep <laughs> reiterating that? They're the same. They do the same thing. All right. And then if we curl it, here, we can just go back to our command line history. And there's my cool page, bro. Ta I, I was waiting for super businessy website. I could have, but businessy is hard to type. I had enough trouble typing bro. <laughs> you did a PS. We see it's running. We see it's uh, attached to that port. Yep. If we were done with it, what would we do? So we can stop it the same way you would stop it normally. If we did the PS again, there you go, it's down. Now, of course, I can then start it again if I wanted to. Like I was saying earlier, we could build a systemd unit file that does this for us. In fact, there's even this cool... Podman generate. This will just spit it to the screen because we're not going to actually do this, but I want to show you what it does. Podman generate systemd, and then you give it the name of something, whether it's a pod running in Podman, a volume or a container like we have here. 
and it'll spit out a unit file that'll run it for you. Now, there's cleaner ways to do this with Quadlet, but again, that's outside of the scope of today's episode. Just know that that's a quick and dirty way to get a service file that will run your container at boot time.